Welcome back. So today we are going to talk a little bit about the CCA duo. So the duo kind of signifies a couple things. One is the return of CCA. We haven't seen a CCA set in a while. Maybe CXS was the last one. Maybe there's one right after that. But sometime last year, I think, was the last time we saw an actual CCA branded set. Second, this one actually is a dual dynamic or a two dynamic driver Dual dynamic driver is sort of confusing uh, in marketing, but this one actually is two independent dynamic drivers. So two 7mm drivers kind of sitting right there, as you can see. Acoustic tubes connecting them through into the nozzle. So quite nice. Um, again, this is another sort of revision, refinement, continued development of, of KZ's new tuning methods, new 3D printing methods, you know, all of this is a continuation and like other sets I would say this one again isn't really end game this is just another step in their process and their spiral development of figuring out new ways to pair drivers together to tune drivers together to you know 3d print them into shells together just a continuation along the path of better and better sets so yes this one is the latest and the coolest one but i doubt this will be the last one that we see in this configuration and certainly kz is continuing on with their frequency division and 3d printing technology so this will i doubt this will be the last time we see this but again faceplate is metal and they call it the asymmetric design so quite nice you get a left and right indicator on the outside which is something you don't see all that often so another cool bit, like I was just talking about, was the 3D printing. And one of the things about uh, the other Truth Ear Zero or Zero Red, as KZ or CCA likes to point it out, that this is a similar configuration to that, is how CCA actually put together the two tubes. So you can kind of see the two tubes down here, and they run up into the nozzle. And right there on the lip, you can see that smaller tube on the right side and the bigger uh, cavity on the left side. So how how KZ and CCA actually 3D printed that and got it and shrank it down so small is actually a very, very cool thing. And uh, perhaps the coolest thing about this whole review will be how small that actually got to be compared to when you look at an actual red set and you look at the nozzle. And, and if you remember, lots and lots of complaints about how big this nozzle actually is and how wide that nozzle is. And for CCA, KZ to shrink the, that pair down to something that's actually quite reasonable and not noticeable, I think, um, quite an achievement. And, and again, like I said, probably the, the coolest thing that you're gonna see in the, in the review so far is going to be you know, that little bit of 3D printing those two tubes uh, on a regular size, barely noticeable size nozzle. So, Cool, right? So let's kind of start off with the cons, though. And I will say that CCA Duo started off kind of stumbling right out of the gate. And if you stumble out of the gate, it makes it very, very difficult to recover. And CCA KZ knows this quite well with Krilla, right? Krilla was the $1,000 killer set. As soon as the first couple reviewers say, well, it doesn't quite beat a couple thousand dollar sets, people lose interest in it, right? You've made a claim and it didn't kind of pan out. People don't say, oh, let's move on and, and then let's talk about how cool it actually is. No, they kind of move on to the next set because they weren't all that happy with what you said about the set in the first place. So DZ4, again, kind of another one where they talked about the passive radiator and all the dynamic drivers. And then people talk about how, well, it's not really a passive radiator. It's not quite working as it should. And the base is kind of so-so. And it's sort of right out of the gate. Um, it didn't have a great feeling, you know, right at the beginning. Rinko, you know, lots of people ended up tearing it apart as opposed to reviewing it right out of the gate, you sort of lost interest because people were more interested in tearing it down than reviewing it and talking about it. Um, Shimon Lee, uh, the, the Encounter Edition, kind of the same thing. They, they sort of drew the line and said, well, we stumbled out of the gate, we had a driver problem, we probably can't recover at all on this set, even if we found a driver that is better or the same or what it was supposed to be. So we're just going to kind of call it a day and take it off the market. But, you know, it's just very, very difficult to recover from if you get these kind of launch week issues. And Duo is sort of another self-created issue where CCA decided to say that the frequency response is the same as Truth Ear Zero Red. 
And then the first couple of measurements come out and it doesn't look quite the same as red. And you sort of question, well, why would they say that? And now they just say that it looks similar to other graphs and they're trying to recover. But, you know, it was just kind of a tough move to poke at a set that was done by a well-known person with a well-known graph. And, you know, it wasn't really necessary. It's not that close to red. And there was no real benefit to saying, you know, outside of having it two dynamic drivers and a graph that was somewhat similar, you know, it wasn't necessary to create, you know, this drama up front of saying, well, we're now we're going to compare it to red because you said it's like red. And if it's not like red, then we're going to lose interest in it. And that's sort of what happened to it. So, again, I think these sets are end up being really hard to review because it's it's like, well... What they said the first week didn't really happen, so now we're going to talk about something else because um, the graphs didn't really work out. So, yeah. So, we'll make this one kind of casual. But on the on the pro side, you know, I do think that CCA returning with a decent seven plus seven, you know, with a pop of tuning style, I think I think they had a solid story there. They didn't have to go here and compare it to a set that it's not all that close to. They had. They had a solid foundation for a set and could have just stuck to it. Once again, like I said, just a nice improvement of KZ's new crossover and tuning techniques and 3D printing techniques. They are continuing to march down and refine and all that stuff. And all that stuff is a good story, and they should stick to that story. The curve fitting, and now it's sort of their latest thing, is how accurate and how well they can fit curves and they can match any curves. And I think all of that is commendable, but do take the time to make sure that the drivers are shining and the tuning is natural and appealing. And I think that is where Simgo really leads in that area. Simgo always says, well, we're, we're using Harman 2019, 2017, whatever their foundation of their house sound is for on a particular set. They say they sort of hit that. But then when you look at what they actually did on the frequency response, it's just kind of small tweaks. There are tweaks to match how well their drivers perform you know, they are very, very good at at sort of fitting the Harman curve, their house sound, to where their drivers sound optimally and perfect and very, very nice. And that's sort of where Casey has to get to. They kind of got this part right, where they figured out with their crossover and tuning, they can hit probably any graph at any point in time that they want, but it still has to sound, uh, you know, a little bit more natural and a little bit more appealing and you know, spend the little extra time that Simgo does to make this thing sound polished and refined as it should. So they'll get there. They're just not quite there yet. So sounds like, and I think this part is, like I said, CCA kind of came out out of the gate and said this thing sounds like Truth or Zero Red. But I think they sort of missed the bigger market of where where it actually sounds similar. And there actually is quite a few or a decent sized market of people who are looking for a set that sounds a lot like duo. And that market is people who bought cadenza and said, it's a little bit too bloaty, a little bit too much mid bass. It's not really detailed enough. Those people who are kind of right at that popular style of Harman with cadenza, who didn't think there was enough detail there and wanted something more, a little more technical. They tended to fall into sets like this or so. So moon drops area, snow edition, right? So they took kind of that mid-bass bloat out of out of Aria, made it a little thinner, a little more technical, a little sharper, and a little cleaner. Do new Titan S. Again, that is a leaner, cleaner. They even bumped that to, you know, add a little emphasis right there in the female vocals, make them a little bit sharper. Both of these sets, clean and clear, got rid of all that bloat. Um, lots of people like that style. And then, so I, I kind of threw in Zero Red just to say how where it actually fit in. But Moondrop Land is also another one that, that fits the same model. Just a clean, clear, well-executed one dynamic driver along basically the same path that all these other sets do. And I think, you know, CCA sort of missed that market of, you know, they, they picked the one that was going to be really tough to argue and it's done by a well-known person and it was going to create a lot of drama and people were going to talk about it, not necessarily in a good way, and then missed the actual bigger market of people who really bought these sets last year who may be looking for sets uh, to upgrade this year. This cleaner, clean, you know, that cleaner, crisper, more neutral style, Harman-ish, 
Um, but really, it's, it's the base curve that people were attracted to sets like Snow Edition and, and Len. And maybe you bought um, Cadenza and weren't really sure. You said, it's a little bloaty and a little thick, and I don't hear as much detail as I want. You may not understand that was a mid-bass level or maybe it was a driver level thing that you're sort of saying you want something better. But you know, in some cases, you are simply just wanting... A, a more neutral style bass that would actually portray a much cleaner sound to you and this has a little bit more emphasis so it sounds a little bit more brighter this cuts through much more of this a lot easier when you don't have that cadenza um, bump over here so again I think Duo hit this curve pretty well and, and this little bit right here I would say that some of my KZs kind of measure weird in this area, but generally looking at the other measurements of where Duo, it never really quite hit where Red is supposed to hit. So I didn't really want to talk too much about it, but you know I do think Duo hit the bass curve pretty well in this style set to hit that demographic of people looking for that cleaner and clearer. I think they hit that more neutral bass style really well. This little bit, and then this little bit up here, this kind of a more V-shape, more engaging, a little bit more fun. You know, I think they actually kind of came up with something that was pretty reasonable and kind of a solid set on its own. They didn't necessarily need to attack this set and say we did something better and cheaper and faster. Um, they could have just had this, you know, remove all that and just say, look, this one is a more, tr more neutral style Harman. We know that people bought those last year. So this is our flavor of a more neutral style bass. Casey hasn't done that in the past uh, all that often. This is like DFI at the lowest setting, right? It's a very neutral style bass. And then you have some little, a little bit more fun out here for people who wanted a little more detail in certain frequency ranges and wanted more air and all that stuff out here. So again, I think it's just a popular style. They hit all the right bits, but... You know, it just stumbled out of the block comparing it to a set that is not all that close. And they had a, you know, a group of people who bought all these sets last year who are really into this style set. And they sort of pissed, they kind of uh, passed over them and said, well, well, we'll try to make the biggest splash out of the gate and see what happens. And uh, so now they're backpedaling a little bit and comparing it to other graphs. So we'll see how this plays out. But uh, yeah. That's kind of what I got on Duo. So thank you guys for tuning in and I will see you next time.